So hello, folk and flick, my imaginary friends and my real friends. I hope you're doing well today. Uh, just a quick thing. Uh, a friend sent me an article. I'll put it in the description of this video. It's interesting, but basically it's like we have a war on death now. So all the players, you can call them capitalists, you can call them whatever. <laughs> the players, the people who run the show, who make up the rules, who break the rules, who get away with murder. Those people, the players, you know who I'm talking about. Well, they got lucky again, because now the war on terror is kind of winding down and they need something else to put panic and fear in the population so that they can do what they've got to do to uh, continue to fleece uh, the world, literally, I mean, the natural resources, the biosphere, um, the ecology of the planet, people's hearts, minds, and souls to uh, print money and take money so that they can have lavish, wonderful lives and convince us that we're fighting some devilish um, enemy, that it's out of our control. And, you know, we need their help. They have to come in and save the day. Well, anyway, it was a good idea, it really was. And it was well written and it wasn't over the top, it wasn't conspiratorial, it was simply pointing out that yet again, the players have a reason to, um, you know, get governments, central banks around the world to make money for them. And uh, we get screwed, as usual, normal working people. So, um, before I read that article, I was writing something and it was about how we don't need a coronavirus to tell us that the system is unsustainable. We've known that for decades. Anybody who's paying attention, who's swimming in the same ocean, who has their lights on, so to speak, who's curious, and wants to know how things work, who reads around various different domains in the world, understands and so many people have the same opinion or the same ideas because they're seeing the same thing and they're looking at the signs and they're saying oops gee gosh it's like you're an animal in the jungle and you read the signs this is where I've got to go today all the signs are pointing this way if you were a hunter down in some um, part of a, of a rainforest in the Cong in Congo or in uh, Amazon or wherever. So um, you read the signs, you see this coming, you know everyone, well, governments at least, should have been prepared for this. Um, they knew it was coming, but they didn't prepare. And uh, the politicians are trying to make bank on it, as they always do. And people are just falling behind because they're cultish. You know, I, I'll put another video that I shared on uh, Globe Hackers Facebook a while, yesterday I think it was, about, uh, he, the guy makes good videos about uh, ultra right wing kind of philosophy of why people uh, are like that. It's fairly fair, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, like a Jonathan Haidt kind of approach. It's not really over the top lefty or ideological but it's just pointing out what may, what's the difference. Well, there are differences, but nobody's born that way. It's not in your genes. You're not born a conservative or an ultra right right winger or a fascist. You learn this stuff from the zeitgeist, from your culture, and then you act it out because you want to fit into your group. It doesn't have to be that way. It never does. Um, he pointed out that there's a difference between ultra-conservative people. They think, well, it's just absolutely that way. That's bad, and this is good, and they're evil, and we're good, and that's the enemy, and these people are on my side, and it all makes perfect sense. And any problem like the coronavirus is just an act of God. It has nothing to do with us, you know. Well, it is part of nature. It is a common thing, a coronavirus. But the way we deal with it, the way we handle the crisis, that's up to us. That's why people are interested in politics and public policy and other things. 
you know. It doesn't have to be that way. We can make it different. People can grow up in a different culture and have slightly different values, even though they had the slightly more conservative gene and the other guy had the slightly more uh, curiosity brain or whatever, you know. You've got a growth mindset. Or, I was a shy boy, had to overcome things. Yeah, we are different. We have genetic differences, but we also have a lot in common. We also take a lot from our culture. That should be just painfully obvious for everybody right now. Anyway, that's it. That's all I want to say. Um, we don't need a coronavirus to understand the system is goofy. Also, if you want to say that the powers that be are using this crisis to put chips in our body and um, steal our freedoms and so on, uh, I also have to ask you, when were we ever free? Were we free in 1822 or were we free in 1922 or 2012? When was that most free time in the universe for people? When was there a time when people didn't, didn't control your business? When you were serfs, when you were slaves, when you were tenant farmers, when you were factory laborers, when you were making cotton in Britain, when you were picking cotton in Virginia? You know, when were we free? When wasn't there somebody surveilling us? You know, the busybody down the street, the baker's wife, the kid across the street watching you try to steal a kiss with your girlfriend out behind the barn. People are always up in our stuff. How free are we? You don't have to go into the free will and determinism debate. That's complicated, but honestly, really. So yes, um, the technology is here. It's coming, 5G, all that stuff. It depends on how we use it. Are we, the people, going to understand it, understand what it can do for us, what it could do to us or against us, and are we going to participate in making decisions about how it's used? And are we going to profit from it, either through public goods or through money? Why should we give our data to Google and Facebook? Why not get a kickback, right? I don't know. Things could be done differently. A lot of people always comment to me, uh, they have this kind of rubber stamp, typical, you know where that's coming from, response to something. And I'm just wondering, where's your imagination? Do you really think there's not a different way of doing things? Can you not imagine a more efficient, a more sustainable, a more just, a more healthy way of doing things? A lot of people in the world spend their whole lifetime in their professions trying to figure out better things, more optimal things, more ideal situations. They're not utopians. They have a vision. They want to make things better for people. You have to have this sense, this cosmopolitan sense, that we're all in this together, but we're different. Yeah, a guy in Georgia, the country, is not like a guy in Georgia, the state in the United States of America. Different cultures, I love that. I hate it when things become uniform, um, homogenized. That's, that's, I, I traveled when things, were, when Japan was still Japan, right? <laughs> I mean, it's still Japan. But when I'd go into a store, I didn't know what any of it was that was there to buy to make a meal with, you know. I was like, where is my food? <laughs> Things like that. Learn a language, live in a different culture and realize, wow, you know, there are different ways of doing things. If you want to blame China for everything, go ahead. They do things differently over there. There's billions of people. There's over a billion people in China, right? These are human beings. These are people just like you and me. So let's back off of it all for a little while and see what do we have to do together to make things better. That's it. We don't have to like speculate that this wasn't coming. The chip in the body, the digital cash, you know, the Bitcoin revolution, the 5G, all of this stuff's coming. If humanity survives climate change, global warming, then these technologies are going to turn our lives up, upside down, right? What's the word for it in Silicon Valley? Disrupt, you know? What did, what did 
The guys say, go fast and break things. Isn't he a genius? Wow. Some people get lucky. But anyway, so let's not attribute these things to some bizarre conspiracy or malevolence when we all knew it was there anyway. We just did, chose not to pay attention to, us, to it because we like Amazon. Who gives a fuck about the workers? I got my camera from Amazon and it works. It was convenient, so I don't give a damn about the workers. Also, looking at the way work's done, we could use a lot more robots. Why not? Why don't we have people working on creative things? Things that are more innovation and care-oriented. Care, like caring for the environment, caring for ecosystems, caring for each other. What's wrong with that? We don't have to go around killing each other in the brutal competition. It's not necessary. Sorry, I went on too long. You guys take care. Um, I hope you liked this. If you watched it, take care. Good luck, okay? Bye.